For those of you who are new to Alter Sim Lab, it really is a complete multi-physics simulation tool that includes FEA and CFD and even electromagnetics, and it's all within the same interface. Now in this video, I want to look at some of the built-in functions into SimLab that are designed to save its users a lot of time and clicks. Things like how to easily simplify your geometry or perform a quick quality check on your mesh, or to find and fix intersecting meshes, or using one of the pre-built solution templates that are included. And then lastly, showing you how to create a BGA really easily. Now, I know I'm going to want to simplify my geometry, mainly to cut down on the computing time when we go to run the simulation. So if I wanted to remove the holes from this model, I have a couple options. The first is I can highlight the body, right click in the margin and choose select features. Now, since I'm looking for holes, I'll keep it on cylinders, but you can see all the different shapes I can choose from. You can see I can actually set a range for the size of hole I want to create as well. So that would be a good way to do it here. Now you can see if I zoom in, all the different holes that it found are now highlighted in pink. Then if I come up here to the geometry ribbon, I'm going to look for the feature icon. Once I click that, there's a drop down menu that I can find the minus hole option. Then if I wanted to just close those holes that fit that range I selected earlier, I can choose the selected bodies or the second option is to come up here and hit all holes. Now you can see it fills in the holes and it even creates a rough mesh on them as well. Now I can choose to either remesh the entire model, or if I want to just remesh the faces of the new filled holes, I can select those faces and choose remesh, which just cuts down on that computing time as well. Next, I want to show you how you can do a quick quality check on your mesh. Now on the mesh ribbon, there's an icon that shows quality check. And when I click that, it shows me a list of parameters of the tent mesh that I've already created. And now I can choose to set limit values or dial in on a specific parameter if I want to. Then when I select compute, it scans my mesh and it gives me a result based on how many fall within my range for that parameter. Now this will show you if there's any failures for that range. Now if you want to see those selections that are out of the range, you would check this little uh, button that says display and then at the bottom here hit the display option. Then if I want to have it clean them up as well, I can check the clean up box and then hit the clean up button here at the bottom and it will do it for me automatically. So now let's look at the intersecting meshes. Now if you have a complex part, sometimes it can be really tough to find if you have any intersecting meshes. And for this, I can go to my mesh tab and find this intersecting icon. Now it quickly highlights any meshes that I have that intersect. And then it's really simple just to highlight those elements and hit delete. Now, once I do that, you can see I'll have a hole in my mesh. Now to fix that, I can come back up to my geometry tab and find this fill icon. And then you can see on the left side of the icon, there's a little hole and I'll click on that. Then I can just select my body, hit okay. And you can see it fills the hole for me. Then just like earlier, you can see, I might want to refine this mesh. I can do it by selecting the face and just coming back up to my mesh tab and hitting remesh. Next is one of my favorite things about SimLab. It has a bunch of pre-built solution templates that are already in the tool. You can see from this ribbon as I go through, there's a bunch of different options based on the type of simulation you want to run. Now for this example, you can see I have batteries, so I'm going to come to the battery option, and I'm going to find the thermoelectric. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit, but now I have solution-specific options for setting up my study. So for a battery thermoelectric study, you're going to see different options like setting up and identifying the battery pack, then going through the battery modules and setting those up and going through and classifying each part for the cells, positive and negative, and the bus bars as well. So again, if I didn't have these pre-built templates inside of SimLab, I'm probably finding a workaround to make sure I can identify each part of this process correctly. Now I've created my circuit model, I can go through and set my voltage and my current, and then I can also go through and set my boundary conditions. Now the good thing is I've already done this one in a previous simulation, I'm going to show you some of the results you can get out of it as well. I can feel a lot more confident in the results I'm getting because I know the way this was set up was very specific to my application. Now one more thing before I move on, SimLab does allow you to export the different parameters as a template and those can be used for future projects. 
So again, just a nice tool to have when you're trying to save times with your projects. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the ball grid array feature. Simlab has a bunch of electronic specific features, and this one just makes so much sense. On the electronic ribbon, you'll see a few options for defining your PCB, but I really want to show you this BGA function. So in here, I can create an array from scratch just by filling out this quick menu. Now I can choose the BGA type, and you can see it adds copper parameters if I select a BGA that includes a copper pad. Then I can go through and change the pattern and the different shape of the balls in my array, and then change any other specifics I need. And then lastly, if I'm working with a PCB, I want to align this to my board or to a component. I can do that here at the bottom as well. Now once I hit OK, it will go through and create this 3D model for me. So you can see I've got it here. And as I spin around, you can see I've got the entire array here in the middle. And then if I come over here to the assembly, you can see I have each component separated so I can see the boards, the copper pads, the balls, and then I can make different changes to those parameters if I need to along the way. So again, just a huge time saver when it comes to what a traditional process might be for designing these BGAs. SimLab is getting better and better with each release, and I hope these little tips might help you take advantage of all it has to offer. If you have any other questions or you want to talk about it further, reach out to us at www.trueinsight.io. Thanks.